Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Nicole, and in today's video, we're going to look at how F. Scott Fitzgerald writes vivid physical descriptions of characters in The Great Gatsby. The Great Gatsby is one of my favorite novels. I think it's beautifully written, and I often come back to it when I'm looking for techniques and strategies that I can use in my own writing to make my own writing more powerful. So I recently decided to reread The Great Gatsby and I was specifically studying how Fitzgerald describes characters. And I collected several strategies that will help you whether you're a fiction writer and you've created a character that you want to describe so they come alive for your readers or you are a nonfiction writer and you're describing characters that are real but you want your readers to be able to visualize them. So let's get started with the first strategy. The first strategy is to focus on the physical characteristics that reveal personality. So let's see how Fitzgerald does this when he first describes Gatsby. And this is when Nick Carraway, the narrator of the story, first meets Gatsby. It was one of those rare smiles with a quality of eternal reassurance in it that you may come across four or five times in life. It faced, or seemed to face, the whole eternal world for an instant, and then concentrated on you, with an irresistible prejudice in your favor. It understood you just so far as you wanted to be understood, believed in you as you would like to believe in yourself, and assured you that it had precisely the impression of you that, at your best, you hoped to convey. Precisely at that point it vanished, and I was looking at an elegant young roughneck, a year or two over thirty, whose elaborate formality of speech just missed being absurd." So obviously from that quote, it is clear that Fitzgerald is describing Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay, obviously not. And this is really, really interesting because Fitzgerald spends a lot of time describing Gatsby's smile and his beautiful description, but he doesn't tell us a lot about Gatsby's physical features. So he doesn't really tell us what Gatsby's hair color is or what color his eyes are or anything like that. He does tell us his age and something about his manners and how he carries himself. But aside from that, he really focuses on Gatsby's smile. And I think this is a really great lesson that we can take away from this paragraph of description, where Fitzgerald really wants to focus on only describing for us the description of the character that we need to understand that character's personality. So this paragraph of description is a really great reminder not to fall into that trap of trying to give our readers, you know, so much detail about our characters that we're almost writing a police description where we're telling them how tall our characters are and what color their eyes are and how much they weigh and all of these details that our readers are probably going to get overwhelmed with. And I've actually talked to, to my friends and asked them, you know, when you see like a paragraph of description in a book where, you know, it's telling us everything about a character, do you tend to skip over that or do you read it? And actually a lot of them said, you know, like I skip over it or I, you know, it kind of takes me out of the story where now I have to like step back and think about like, okay, what does this character exactly look like? And those, a lot of those details probably aren't even advancing the story in any way. So we see here when Fitzgerald tells us what Gatsby's smile is like, it's revealing a lot about this character. And so we really need to like let go of wanting to give these detailed descriptions of our characters because a lot of times, you know, no matter how detailed our description is, our readers probably are not going to visualize our character 100% the way we're visualizing that character unless we have an illustration or a photograph that we're giving them. And when we kind of get to that understanding, then it's so much easier to focus on what are the physical characteristics that I really need to include in this description and what physical characteristics will reveal the personality of my character and help my reader to really get to know that character better and understand their motivation throughout the story. 
So for example, if you have a character who say has red hair, you know, how does that affect the character? Why is that an important detail? I was thinking of the book Anne of Green Gables where that's actually a really important part of the story that she has red hair because she ends up being bullied over it and it adds tension to the story. So you can think of the same thing if a character is tall, is he comfortable being tall? How does that add tension to the story and why is it important for you to include that detail? Now interestingly, there is another part in the book where Fitzgerald does kind of describe what Gatsby looks like and Daisy makes this remark that Gatsby looks like an advertisement, a person in an advertisement. And so I guess at the time, if you knew what advertisement she was referring to, and a lot of scholars think it was an arrow collar advertisement, but there's a lot of different people who modeled for the arrow collar uh, advertisement. So we don't exactly know which one would have looked like Gatsby, but also just having this detail. So you can, of course, if you want to include in your story, if it's really important to your story, you could reference how a character looks like someone in a painting, for instance, that your reader could go, you know, look up online, what is this painting? What does this person look like? But again, you want to make sure that even by including that description, it ties back to the theme of your story in some way and reveals something about the personality of the character. So even here, when Daisy mentions that Gatsby looks like this advertisement, again, she's kind of echoing the theme of the story where it's this, you know, Gatsby is trying to be something that he's not. He's trying to, the, the advertisement would be like the ideal style for the upper class gentleman or something like that. And so it's again, looking at how Gatsby is, you know, kind of putting on this facade. The second strategy is not to limit yourself to physical features when you are describing characters. So as we just saw with the description of Gatsby's smile, you can also describe a character's facial expression, you can describe their tone of voice, you can even describe their posture. And we can see this in Fitzgerald's description of Tom Buchanan, who is the antagonist of the story. Now he was a sturdy, straw-haired man of thirty, with a rather hard mouth and a supercilious manner. Two shining, arrogant eyes had established dominance over his face, and gave him the appearance of always leaning aggressively forward. Not even the effeminate swank of his riding clothes could hide the enormous power of that body. He seemed to fill those glistening boots until he strained the top lacing, and you could see a great pack of muscle shifting when his shoulder moved under his thin coat. It was a body capable of enormous leverage, a cruel body. His speaking voice, a gruff husky tenor, added to the impression of fractiousness he conveyed. There was a touch of paternal contempt in it, even toward people he liked. So I know that these quotes are a little bit long, but I just, I didn't know where to cut them. They're just so great. And I really love this description of Tom Buchanan. I think it's a really a great description of a villain in a story. It really makes you, you know, that, that line where Fitzgerald says he had a cruel body. I love how he includes these adjectives. And he's also just telling us about Tom's posture and how he talks to people and the tone of his voice voice and it just gives us such a fantastic picture of this character. So definitely worth studying this paragraph to find many more strategies. But again, look at those little details that you can pick out to describe a character. So Gatsby does tell us the color of Tom's hair, but it kind of fades into the background with all of this other wonderful description of this character and how he carries himself. And I also want to mention here, since we're talking about not limiting yourself to only describing a character's physical features, but also looking at things like their tone of voice and their posture, that is really interesting that Daisy really isn't described that much in the novel. And when she is described, Fitzgerald talks about the tone of her voice. I looked back at my cousin, who began to ask me questions in her low, thrilling voice. It was the kind of voice that the ear follows up and down, as if each speech is an arrangement of notes that will never be played again. Her face was sad and lovely with bright things in it, bright eyes and a bright, passionate mouth, but there was an excitement in her voice that men who had cared for her found difficult to forget. 
<laughs> so again, we don't have a really detailed description of Daisy with a lot of physical characteristics, the same for Gatsby as well, but we can kind of fill in the blanks here and you do get a really good feeling for who Daisy is as a person. And of course, there's another famous quote from the book where Nick says that Daisy's voice, it was full of money. That was the inexhaustible charm that rose and fell in it, the jingle of it, the symbol song of it. So I just think that this is a fantastic strategy, especially when you're describing side characters in a story and you don't need to spend a lot of description on them, but maybe you can pick out one thing about their personality or you know the tone of their voice or something like that, one distinguishing characteristic that will reveal their personality. And it's also a really wonderful strategy if you're writing memoir essays, for example, and you know you just think about this person that you're describing and if if you're not including a photo of that person in your piece, how can you describe them for your readers? You know, does your does your friend that you're describing, do they have a wonderful smile that really communicates their personality? You know, what is that distinguishing feature that will help people to understand who this person is? The third strategy is to juxtapose two characters. So this is really helpful if you have multiple characters in your story and you're able to kind of compare and contrast characters and it makes your description really, really more engaging for your readers. So let's look at how Fitzgerald does this in The Great Gatsby. Her face contained no facet or gleam of beauty, but there was an immediately perceptible vitality about her as if the nerves of her body were continually smoldering. She smiled slowly, and walking through her husband as if he were a ghost, shook hands with Tom, looking him flush in the eye. Then, without turning around, spoke to her husband in a soft, coarse voice. Get some chairs, why don't you, so somebody can sit down. Oh, sure, agreed Wilson hurriedly, and went toward the little office, mingling immediately with the cement color of the walls. A white ashen dust veiled his dark suit and his pale hair as it veiled everything in the vicinity except his wife. So you can see there how Fitzgerald contrasts these two characters and we really get this sense of how different their personalities are and also, there is a lot of tension in this scene, and so this is a really fantastic way to introduce tension into your story, which is going to keep your readers more engaged with your story so that they're not just sitting there reading description, but it's actually even making your plot move along as well. And so I recommend checking out my video on the dinner table exercise where I talk about how you really want to have characters react to situations differently. So you don't want to have two characters reacting in exactly the same way to a situation, but you want to have this contrast of characters and personality. The fourth strategy is to weave description into the action of your story. So as we saw with the previous strategy, it's really good if you can include your description in a scene that is still moving forward. So we're not getting a paragraph of description that kind of pulls our readers out of the story and makes them stop and they have to, you know, think about, okay, how are you describing this character? But it's woven into the natural flow of the story. So let's see how Fitzgerald does this with the description of Gatsby's father. It was Gatsby's father, a solemn old man, very helpless and dismayed, bundled up in a long cheap ulster against the warm September day. His eyes leaked continuously with excitement, and when I took the bag and umbrella from his hands, he began to pull so incessantly at his sparse gray beard that I had difficulty in getting off his coat. So you can see in this scene how Fitzgerald, you know, he doesn't just tell us, oh, the father showed up and he had a gray beard and he was wearing this coat, but it's all naturally written into that scene where it tells you, oh, the father is pulling on his gray beard because he's very anxious and nervous. And so that's, you know, just an interesting way that you can add description into your story. Again, instead of dumping it all into one paragraph, you could say, you know, your character ran a hand through their blonde hair or something like that, and just naturally have it still, you know, have some kind of active quality to it that is pushing your story along. 
So I hope these strategies help you. And really the main takeaway here is to think about whenever you're describing characters to really consider, you know, why am I including this detail? How is it important to the story? How does it move the plot along? How does it reveal something about the personality of my character? And if it's really not important to the story, then you probably don't need to include it. And I also find it really, really interesting with The Great Gatsby that it is written in the first person. So a lot of these descriptions of these different characters are interesting because they also are revealing a lot about the narrator, Nick Carraway, because this is how he is seeing these characters. And so that tells us a lot about his own personality. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my video about close reading, where I share how you can study your favorite books and discover techniques and strategies that you can use to make your writing more powerful. I'll put a link in the description to that video. And I've also written several articles about The Great Gatsby sharing more strategies like how to write stronger dialogue. And I'll put links in the description to those as well and a link to my email newsletter where you can sign up and get more writing resources. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic week. God bless, and I wish you all the best with your writing projects.